Good morning, everyone. I'm Wendy from Silence, and I work with Ed on the OpenAMP. And thanks, Ed, very much for the very good uh, introduction of OpenAMP. Um, so, um, OpenAMP, the current implementation, um, it solves the um, lifecycle management and also the IPC uh, issues between uh, uh, the uh, computer, uh, between the CPUs in a heterogeneous system. And uh, so uh, OpenAMP implement the RP message, which is basically for the messaging. And however, we have uh, see, seeing, um, we have common <coughs> issues on sharing large data uh, between the uh, processors. And so uh, today's uh, <coughs> this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, some ideas on how to solve uh, the uh, large data sharing with OpenEMP. And um, so, and we'll also, um, as um, Ed mentioned, uh, we, uh, we have a uh, lip metal uh, layer uh, for the cross OS abstractions for primitives. And uh, we also have a uh, shared memory um, abstraction to share the memory uh, between uh, processors and its devices. And the coprocessor can also be considered as uh, one type of devices. So we will also talk about that too. Um, so. So today, uh, OpenEMP implement the uh, RP message, um, which is based on what I O, and uh, there is some limitation with the RP message. Um, the protocol itself is uh, defined for message only, as you can see. Uh, this there is a field for the length of the payload, and it is only sixteen bit. So it, uh, for some cases, if you have a uh, uh, multiple Mac of data and RP message is not enough. And uh, it use what I O. What I O, um, it manage uh, ring buffers. Um, so, uh, and uh, all the, um, and all the, uh, all the buffers, uh, the length of the buffers in the uh, RP message, what I O implementation, they are fixed. Um, even though uh, we are talking about how to make the buffers uh, configurable. But however, um, so far all the, um, all the proposals, um, it is still uh, need to fix the buffers before the communication set up. And um, also, uh, for, uh, in order for co-processor to, to write, to share data with the, uh, the, the master processor, the application processor, and um, the, all the buffers uh, need to be allocated by the master processor uh, before the communication is set up. And for large data sharing, um, we need uh, to have a better performance and we need zero copy. And also, uh, where the memory is and the size of the required memory, it can be predefined or uh, it can be, uh, or it will be defined by the application at runtime. That is, we need uh, dynamically allocate uh, memory <coughs> for large data at runtime. And uh, in a Linux system, we also uh, have some uh, issues with the uh, existing Linux um, RP message implementation. And uh, for Linux, uh, in order to share a large data between the uh, process, between the main processor and the coprocessor, the application need to access directly to the shared memory. So uh, we will have issue to uh, expose the DMA, um, the DMA buffer into the user uh, application so that the user application can directly um, access the data from the shared memory. Um, so um, this, uh, these are some use cases. One is the shared memory are predefined. And the other is the, uh, the, the, the memory uh, is not uh, predefined and um, you will need to allocate it from the system memory at runtime. Um, the other it is, it is possible that there is IOMMU between uh, the main processor and the coprocessors. So uh, people are working on uh, solve these um, issues with different options. Um, so uh, some people uh, comes up with the RP message zero copy support. 
uh, which this idea was from NXP in their RP message light. And also recently, uh, some company uh, like Xiaomi, he is trying to, they are trying to, um, to add this support, uh, bring this support into open AMP. But uh, this uh, change, that, uh, but however, uh, this proposal, there is no change to the RP message buffer allocation. And all the buffers are still uh, allocated, and each buffer are still fixed size. And so, um, and this, uh, but however, what this, uh, what this uh, proposal gave to user is, um, instead of uh, you need to copy the message data from application memory into the shared memory, um, the, uh, the library can directly expose the payload, uh, uh, the payload area of the share buffer into application. So this will help to improve the performance for um, sending short messages. And um, the other idea was actually from Mantor. Um, they, uh, they were talking about um, to have uh, chained uh, buffers uh, to increase the size um, of the RP message buffers. But however, um, with this approach, um, the chain buffer is actually a scatter gather list. So some cases, if you want to use contiguous memory for your large data, uh, you cannot use this, uh, uh, this approach. And also, uh, because the RP message itself, the length field uh, is just 16 bit. So uh, in some cases, uh, if your, if your uh, data size is larger than that, and this doesn't fit. So there are multiple approaches with different use cases. And there is one which mentioned by Thomas earlier, which is um, we, uh, some user, they allocate the uh, memory uh, at runtime and then use RP message uh, to, um, to exchange the shared memory information and use RP message for synchronization. And this is the option I'm going to give more details uh, in uh, today's discussion. So uh, for large data sharing, um, there are um, a couple uh, common steps to uh, uh, we usually do. One, it is you will allocate the memory from some memory allocator. After you got this uh, allocated shared memory, you will attach this memory to a remote proc. Um, and this attachment, what it will do is um, it can um, it will you can retrieve the device address from the uh, attachment because the coprocessor, uh, the address space may not be the same as the main processor. Um, so you will need to uh, know um, the device address in order to tell the coprocessor uh, where the memory is. And maybe uh, you will use something, uh, some uh, platform specific synchronization method, for example, like uh, hardware logs. And uh, in this attachment um, operation, you can prepare for those synchronization resource. Um, and then uh, you can send the RP message to the coprocessor to tell about um, this is the shared memory I'm going to use to share some data with you. And then uh, this is about the setup. And um, after the setup, and when you, uh, after the, um, the main processor write something to the to the shared memory and uh, and get it ready to share this um, this data to the coprocessor, and um, you will do a uh, star sync operation um, to the uh, remote proc so that uh, you can uh, unmap the uh, memory for to the main processor so that the main processor will no longer access the memory, and then you can use RP message to tell the coprocessor uh, there is some uh, shared data ready for you to access. And then uh, when um, the coprocessor finished accessing the data <coughs> and uh, the application will uh, do a sync end operation, which it is to um, make sure the coprocessor do, uh, do not touch the uh, memory and make sure the memory is unmapped back to uh, is unmapped so that the main processor can continue to use the mem uh, to use the memory. 
So um, that's the explanation of those steps. And uh, for a flat memory system, the allocation can be simple, uh, for example, line malloc. But however, um, if uh, the operating system is a little bit more more complicated, the memory is not flat. Uh, for example, Linux kernel, there is kernel space, user space, and then we need to have a more um, complicated uh, approach. So uh, this is about some idea on <coughs> how to use RP message uh, for shared memory synchronization. So today, um, we don't have this uh, service yet in the OpenAMP, but however, uh, it looks like um, this is a very common um, issue, so we are trying to um, have some common uh, RP message service to cover that. So basically, uh, we use RP message to tell the uh, coprocessor where the shared memory is, and we use the RP message to sync up. So uh, let's talk about um, uh, the, um, the Linux implementation. And um, in Linux, um, there is a remote pro uh, kernel driver and RP message kernel driver. And um, at the moment, um, different uh, vendors has a different way to allocate the memory and um, tell the, uh, the coprocessor where the memory is. And so we are looking for a common way. And today, there is some limitation to the remote proc implementation. Um, remote proc, it uses the resource table to describe the shared resources, including the shared memory. But however, in order to use the resource table to describe the shared memory, um, the shared memory needs to be pre-allocated uh, even before the Linux loads the coprocessor, and which it is not uh, feasible um, in a lot of cases because we need uh, we don't even know um, the size and where the shared memory should be for large data, and um, also uh, today the resource table it only supports the word I/O devices, and um, but however in a lot of application those large data uh, those large <coughs> memory for shared data, um, it is not uh, what I/O uh, devices. It's just some a large chunk of memory. Um, so here, so that's uh, what we are. Um, that's some idea to how to solve it uh, with some uh, changes to the current remote prod implementation. Um, about allocating the memory, um, you, we need to allocate the memory from some. Uh, Allocator. Uh, unlike the flat um, memory system, uh, Linux is different, and Linux uh, user space usually uh, cannot uh, directly access the DMA um, memory. So uh, we found that there is a ION implementation, which it is um, used to manage uh, memory pools. And uh, today, the ION it is in the staging area. It is uh, introduced by uh, Android. And uh, it exposes a DMA buffer to the, uh, to the Linux user space. Um, with the DMA buff um, kernel implementation, um, the D DMA memory can be shared within the different Linux kernel devices and also the uh, Linux user space applications. And so um, after we get the DMA buff from the ION, um, and also this ION, you can uh, allocate memory from the system memory or you can also uh, specify your uh, specific memory pool to tell where you want this memory from. So it will also work for statically defined shared memory. And after uh, you got the, uh, after the application uh, got the DMA buff from the ION, and um, we, can, we will need to um, Expose, export this uh, DMA buff to a uh, remote uh, to a uh, device driver, for example, like the remote proc driver, <coughs> which it is for the coprocessor case. And um, today, uh, there is no API for remote proc driver to get a DMA buff. So we suggest to uh, introduce an API for remote proc to so that it can um, it can get the DMA buff from the user space. And the remote prod will need to implement the uh, 
DMA buff uh, kernel operations, uh, the, the DMA buff operations defined by the Linux kernel. And then um, from this uh, operation, from importing, uh, from exporting the DMA buff to the remote proc, and um, the user application can get the device address uh, of the shared memory. Um, so that because the remote proc knows the device uh, address mapping of the coprocessor. And then um, the, uh, uh, the application can send an RP message to the coprocessor to tell the coprocessor where the shared memory is and how big the size is. And so that the coprocessor on its own side, it can do uh, memory mapping uh, in order uh, for it to access the memory. And then um, Linux, uh, and then the user application, when it is ready to share the data to, with the coprocessor, um, it can use the standard Linux kernel um, DMA buff operation. Uh, the DMA buff operation provides uh, uh, sync uh, to device and sync uh, to CPU, um, so that uh, the um, so that the memory can uh, be unmapped for the coprocessor to access, and it can be mapped again so that the CPU can access the so that the application can access the memory again. Um, and uh, user application will also need to use API message um, to tell the coprocessor uh, when uh, you can access the memory and when um, and when the coprocessor can access the memory. And the coprocessor can also use API message to tell the application I have done with the the um, with the memory access. And of course, if you have, uh, if your platform supports uh, some other locking mechanism, uh, you don't have to use the API message for the synchronization. But uh, API message, it, it is a generic way. And so uh, in case of IOMMU, um, it is actually easier from the application point of view. It just allocates some memory, uh, some space, and then um, ask remote proc to do a DMA mapping, and then um, you, uh, and then it can use API message to tell the coprocessor and for the synchronization as well. Um, so, um, actually, uh, the process for a uh, application to share the memory with a coprocessor it is very similar for the application to share the memory to share large data with a device. And as we and as uh, Ed mentioned uh, <coughs> previously, um, we have a lead metal layer, which it is provide a primitive abstraction uh, across different operating system and uh, hardware platform. And today, the uh, lead metal provides a I/O abstraction, interrupt abstraction, device abstraction, and some logs abstraction. And so we are thinking about to extend it to um, add a share memory abstraction too, uh, to cover um, the memory sharing between the, the processor and the devices and also uh, between the co-processors. So uh, this is our, uh, what we are working on. So uh, this is the share, uh, this is the deep metal share memory uh, abstraction APIs. Uh, you open a um, share memory with the lib metal share mem API, and uh, this operation it will return you a share memory uh, object. And then uh, you use the um, share memory attachment operation, and this operation um, can prepare the, uh, can attach assign the memory to a device, a coprocessor, or another process, and then. Um, that you can use the lib metal memory sync API to sync the shared mem uh, to sync the shared memory between the main processor, uh, the device coprocessor, or other processes. Um, so uh, and so uh, we are and then uh, we are thinking about to use this uh, lib metal. Um, API as the uh, main API to share the memory between coprocessor and device and the main uh, and the main processor. 
and um, then have the uh, RP message and remote proc implementation. Um, under the, the lead metal API um, for the uh, for the large data sharing between the um, between the, uh, the, the the processors in a heterogeneous system. So, um, but however, um, in this uh, there is uh, something uh, which um, we um, we are still. Um, in discussion, and uh, we haven't uh, <coughs> really sorted out how to solve yet, which is um, there is a RP message implementation inside the Linux kernel. And so there is use cases that um, not just the Linux user space application uh, want to share the, the large data with the coprocessor. Um, so uh, some cases, it is also possible that there is a kernel driver uh, to share the, the, want to share the data with the coprocessor. But uh, we haven't figured, really figured out how to do it yet, um, because um, we, uh, in order to share the, in order to, to tell the coprocessor where the memory is, um, unless the coprocessor share the same uh, address view uh, as the main processor, otherwise you need to know the device address uh, mapping of the coprocessor, and only the remote proc knows uh, those address mapping, and so. Um, so far, uh, there's, um, the RP message device doesn't know um, which uh, remote port device um, this RP message uh, uh, device is attached to, and uh, the remote port uh, doesn't uh, device doesn't know um, which uh, RP message devices attached to it either. So this is uh, still a open um, issue we need to figure out uh, for those uh, cases. Um, and um, so I think um, that's all uh, my sharing uh, today. So any questions? Are you breaking the libmetal abstraction view, right? If what you're saying is that libmetal would then call into RP message, right? That's kind of backwards, I guess, from what it, with the way it works today, right, where RP message has been using libmetal to abstract functionality. So it feels like this should be something else, right? Yeah, so this is uh, what we are uh, thinking about, whether that, um, because um, if you uh, look at a higher level, uh, the, a coprocessor can also be considered as a device. And also, the Linux kernel provide the RP message interface and remote port interface. So that's uh, why we are thinking uh, we can have another abstraction uh, so that to, um, to make a generic API to, uh, for the, um, I think the sharing. Sorry, I think the abstraction is fine. I just don't think I would call it libmetal. I think oh, the, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I get the idea of the abstraction. I just think the, what libmetal has been to date this doesn't fit to me the layer where you're cutting it, right? Where libmetal has kind of sort of provided a set of services and abstraction. I think this is kind of inverted from what has been there historically. Um, so I would, I, I think the abstraction I understand, I just would have it be called something new um, for one. I guess the other question I have is, what's the use case for the coprocessor um, needing to request memory versus being told where memory is? Um, yeah, it is possible. Uh, so there can be cases that um, <coughs> it is the coprocessor uh, want to tell the main processor, I want to share the, the data with uh, main processor. So what we are thinking it is uh, we can do this with RP message. So it is still the main processor to allocate the memory but uh, it is the uh, co-processor to send a request to the main processor. Right, I guess what I'm trying to understand is what, so, so if I think of the co-processor as being a device, right, and you think about DMA style devices, typically, right, so let's take an ethernet controller, right, the, the processor and the driver there is responsible for setting up a ring structure with memory, you know, 
buffers for the, let's say, the Ethernet receive to, to write into, right? So that coprocessor in this case is the Ethernet controller, and it is told where the memory is, right? Mm -hmm. It's not ever requesting back somehow where, so I'm just trying to understand, I, I imagine there is some use case or some use model that is, that you guys have or something of, of when it is that, what, you know, what's the application example of the coprocessor wanting to ask for memory versus sort of being initialized and told an over runtime maybe in some ring structure or something that here's where the, here's, here where the buffers are for you to either work on or here's a pool of buffers for you to write to for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Uh -huh. Right, so uh, here uh, it, it, it sounds to me that um, it looks like in this case it is more like the shared memory, it is predefined. Is it correct? And then it is not like uh, the coprocessor dynamically uh, uh, decide I want to share some data, but however, uh, it is predefined. It, it's not that it's predefined, it's just that as, as the life cycle of what you're doing, the, it's who owns the memory, right? And mm -hmm. in this case, the memory is managed and owned by, quote unquote, the host processor, right? But it's still, it can still be dynamically managed and allocated over the life cycle to the coprocessor. So what I'm trying to understand is it, what's the use or there's some example that you guys must have of when it is that the coprocessor wants to explicitly ask versus being told where the memory, a buffer is for it to use for some application purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so far we haven't actually have this case, but I believe that there is such a cases. So um, in our, all our cases, it is more like um, you still need someone to manage uh, the shared memory. And so this one, uh, it is, uh, so for all the, the, the cases I described in this uh, session, it is always the, the main processor. So even the co-processor want to share data, it needs to ask. But however, we may uh, also want to consider whether the memory allocator can be exists outside of these two processors as well. But uh, uh, we haven't um, think through it yet. Okay. Um, but that's a very good uh, use case to, to we need to consider. So just to add, uh, this is one of those things we're going to discuss in the, in the meeting tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah. Hey, I, I've got a bunch of other questions, so but I'll I probably wait. better better <laughs> than yeah. yeah. Did you take uh, trust zone into account into this uh, open AMP regarding uh, what is trusted, who can access which memory, and how trust zone is uh, you know T and opt and stuff like that? Um, so um, we haven't uh, so. Uh, what I put in this uh, slide, haven't considered the trust zone, but it looks like there is a opti which can also uh, allocate a buff um, so that uh, you can control, um, you can limit your uh, DMA uh, access. Uh, but maybe this is also another thing we can consider as well. Can you go back to the slide that you kind of talked about some of the other implementations or, or you know, um, that people have looked at. I was, I was kind of curious or trying to understand a little bit about um, is the, what's the quote unquote on the wire for what you guys are talking about? So is the idea here that the RP message payload, that you would define a, a structure to an RP message payload that then would have sort of the information that you would need for sharing and so forth? Is that the kind of the thought and then sort of how does that compare to what, I, I guess it wasn't clear to me what some of these other, I, I get the scatter gather one, but I don't quite understand what the NXP zero copy, what it was trying to do, was it? Oh, uh, this one is different. So uh, what they are doing, it is, um, so uh, today, uh, in order to uh, send a message to a, um, to a co-processor, you need to copy the message data from the application memory into the uh, share uh, buffer. And so what they are doing, it is um, uh, when you try to do that, 
you first you will want uh, your application will ask for a buffer from the ring first, and then uh, what's returned from the ring is the um, address pointer to the payload of the RP message uh, buffer, and then your application can directly um, input a uh, message to the payload, okay. and then uh, it will return the ring uh, to the it, it will return the, turn the buffer to the ring. Okay, I, I think I understand. Is has it has there been talk or thought about having a different a new V ring structure that would out sort of deal with some of the limitations that the current one has, maybe the size fields and being able to encode more information in the as opposed to having to encode keeping the same ring structure but then encoding it in the payload? Uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but maybe it will be good to discuss in uh, yeah, Wednesday. That's why we can talk to them. So any other questions? Okay, then. Thanks, everyone.